Hello and welcome everyone to this tutorial on the ONET Online website. So if you're unaware, ONET Online is a website produced by the government that has a lot of job information on it. It's nothing where you can go to apply to jobs per se, at least not directly, unlike Indeed or Monster. It's purely for job information. It's a great tool, not only for things like interview research, but also career exploration. A lot of people come in to the career link and they say they're not sure what they want to do. And they're not sure, you know, what kind of roles they want to look into now that they've, you know, been dislocated from something else. So I'm Nick, and I'll be uh, walking you through the Onet website and showing you all of its little uh, details, at least the ones that I find important for any job search. So to do this, first and foremost, we're going to use a web browser. I'm going to be using Google Chrome. It's this little symbol you can see up here where my cursor is, or you can see right down here. Any web browser will do whatever one you're most... Uh, fond of or one you have the most familiarity with, either, anyone is fine. So to access ONET Online, we, all we need to do is type in ONET, oop, if my keyboard would work, let's take two on that one, yeah, onetonline.org, mine's going to come up right away because I've been to the site before, but it is simply just onetonline.org, O-N-E-T, online.org. So this is what ONET looks like, there's a lot of boxes, a lot of words in this front page, but in most cases, I don't actually show people everything on this front page. There are things on this front page that we're going to see as we go through our own little tutorial here. And please do feel free to, you know, read through all this and see what it all has to offer you. But the best way I like to show people is just simply by searching up a job or role. So let's say you were interested in some sort of position. You want to learn more about the position uh, because maybe you were looking into how to, you know, break into it. Well... That's what we're going to use this uh, area up here for. So I'm going to use um, one of my past searches as truck driver here. And you can find that truck driver would work. I can take out truck driver and simply type in trucking. I should get about the same results. So here we can see that ONET gives us a lot of different positions related to uh, their uh, the, the keyword we put in, I should say. And you can see that next to these positions they have codes. Feel free to make note of these if you like. Uh, using these codes are ways to find these specific areas more frequently, or more easily, I should say, if you wanted to write these down for your own benefit. But I find it easier just to simply using the search bar like I mentioned. The other thing you might notice are these little symbols you see, the bright outlook in green. If you click on these symbols right here, any, any of them at all, but let's click on the titled ones, it's going to take you to a little screen that will show you uh, what a bright outlook means. In this case, it means that these positions are expected to grow rapidly over the next number of years or have a large number of job openings. So having a sun symbol next to a job you're interested in going into is a very good thing to see. If we go back to that page and then click on the green, we'll find out that green has a lot of different meanings, but mainly it refers to changes as a result of what we call the green economy, really relating to technologies and advancements and activities uh, that are using greener energy and cleaner energy uh, throughout it. So you'll see that through a couple different jobs, especially ones like transportation, as it specifically talks about in this case, uh, that is really using green technology. So let's say the position I was looking for was heavy and tractor trailer truck drivers. Now, what if I wasn't sure if that was correct? How would I know on title alone? Well, you wanna try to find one that you find most similar, you know, maybe you've looked up a few job uh, applications before, and maybe you're finding this is one that's most similar. If you're still not sure, simply click on it. This first little summary right here is going to give you an idea of what this position specifically does, because there are a lot of different kinds of truck drivers. So maybe a tractor trailer truck driver wasn't the one you were initially thinking of. Um, so you do want to double check this right here. But let's say we did that. And we went through it and we said, okay, this is the one we're looking for. Let's kind of break down an ONET page here and see what ONET all, all has to offer. So like we mentioned before, there is a nice little summary right here that gives you an idea of what a tractor trailer truck driver in this case will do. I always like to point out this, people, uh, for those of you who are writing resumes right now or helping getting someone to help you write your resume, this is a good idea to go for if you need some uh, ideas for your summary, a good little statement here. Know, your summary on your resume maybe should have some of the language you find uh, in this summary because if you're applying to be a heavy truck driver then you want some language that's similar 
Of course, I wouldn't copy and paste this sort of thing or anything like that, but it just gives me some ideas. Next, we have some sample job titles. So these are job titles that are synonymous with this job title that appears. So if you're looking for this job title, maybe you can try delivery driver or log truck driver or over the road driver. You know, it could give you other options and more exploration in your career because maybe you're only finding these kind of roles, but you never thought to search by these kind of roles. Obviously, this gets a little different because typically with uh, positions like transportation, specifically with a position that requires a CDLA in this case, you know, you might need different sort of certifications to do that, but this is much more applicable for something like a customer service associate. You know, we have a million different ways of describing that position, so maybe that'd be, you know, much more helpful in those cases. Right here, we have a little uh, guideline, if you will, for the page. So you can click on each of these areas. It's going to take you directly to that page, but for now, or that section of this page, I should say, but for now, we're just kind of going to go through it step by step. So first we have the task section here. This is a good uh, area to get uh, more detailed information about what a truck driver in this case will do. So you'll see it shows about five bullet points here. You can see there's a total of 31 if you look right under the task section. To access the rest of them, all we need to do is press that plus button. And there we go, all 31 bullet points are gonna come up. You'll notice that even those green symbols and those sun symbols will come back again under individual bullet points, making the information a lot more specific and helpful, in my opinion. Of course, we wanted to collapse this, we just pressed the minus button here. You kind of see how the opposite button is grayed out when you're not using it. And the other interesting thing I always like to point out to people are these bullet points you see here. These bullet points have little plus signs in them, that's for a reason. They actually do serve a functional purpose. So if, you, if you're if you very good, for example, at you know inspecting loads and cargo, and you want to see what other jobs use that skill, you can click on the bullet point right there. And you're going to see it's given us some jobs here that use that skill very specifically. Again, that one might be more specific to truck drivers and you know different kinds of people in the transportation industry here. But think of skills that are much more uh, general that you might find later on the way here. Maybe you have that skill or maybe a job you worked at used that skill and now you want to see how it relates to other jobs out there. That's a great way to sort of do that in a backwards motion. You know, maybe you were a chef before and you searched up the chef uh, own it online page on here. You went to its skills page that we'll see in a couple moments here and see what other jobs use those transferable skills. You know, it's a great way to get an idea of what those transferable skills are. Next, we have technology. Again, we can use the same sort of format, you know, clicking on the little plus button to show us all technologies. One thing I always say about technologies when it comes to ONET is really pay attention to the title per area. Sometimes ONET jobs have 30 plus different areas of technology. Now is ONET saying, hey, you need to know how to use every single technology we list here? No, not at all. In many cases, that would be uh, ludicrous. But it's more so saying that these are technologies used across the industry in different areas here. So maybe you might not have to use all these technologies, but they're used nationally across the way there. Really, the ones you want to pay attention to are the ones with these little flame symbols next to them. You can see down below, you see a little legend here. That's a hot technology. It's a technology that's frequently included. Those are the ones I would say to pay more attention to. If one of these things, other things catch your eye that you know you may come across, you've heard before, then of course you do want to pay attention to it somewhat more significantly. But don't think that you need to know every single technology that own that little list for your position. Again, remind yourself that this information is taken from a national survey. So maybe some of these technologies aren't even used on this side of the country. And we have knowledge, which is a much more general section, but still important to look into. And again, as always, we can always use our, you know, plus signs here to see what other sort of positions use these general knowledges. Skills, as I mentioned before, is a great way to see what kind of transferable skills we can see are really important. You know, these are pretty general skills. Time management will probably have a lot of them. You know, we can see, again, a lot of things come up for a lot of different positions. Ability is kind of the same thing as skills, but maybe a little different um, much more specific in terms of what you're actually doing. Um, all this fun stuff, you know, inductive reasoning, night vision, all this fun stuff. Work activities, so if you want to know specifically what a tractor trailer truck driver in this case is doing, they even get more detailed of the work activities so you can, you know, put them in shorter order, but specifically pointing out each and every activity. You can see this section is one of the longer sections 
uh, on this page or contacts, so you know, where are you working with? You know, are you pressured by time? Are you in hot or cold temperatures? You know, obviously being a truck driver, you're outdoors most of the time. You can see how they kind of list things uh, colloquially. You're working outside almost every day. You're in a closed vehicle every day. You're always working more than 40 hours, 40 hours, excuse me. Um, so it is very important to pay attention to these things because what if, you know, this one was a deal breaker, you didn't want to work a 50 hour or 60 hour work week or you wanted to work inside you know a truck driver would probably not be the position for you in that case and we have job zone it has a lot of different information here so kind of reiterating stuff we saw before and you're going to see after um, but a nice little sort of uh idea if you want to give it that too and it has this job zone two here we really don't uh typically go into that but we can see it gives us an idea of what job zone two means it means that some preparation would need i mean we know that you can't just you know have a driver's license and hop into a truck you need a specialized driver's license known as a cdl uh to do that so you do need a class c license that's why it is in job zone two so do pay attention to these job zones obviously the more educated or the more licenses and certifications you might need for a position probably the higher the job zone so a doctor might be in job zone five i would guess or anything but here at Carillion, we don't pay attention too much to the job zones uh, because we like to explain it as we're going through it. Education, you want to see what education you might need. Credentials, if you want to find training, but you may be doing that through us anyway. And then this interest section is very interesting. If you've seen other workshops available on our Lehigh site or if you've been to workshops before, you might have already done this interest section. Uh, but what this interest section is saying is it has uh, these codes here, realistic and conventional, and it's describing uh, almost like personality traits as how, what kind of people would like this. Of course, realistic means, you know, they like work activities that are practical, hands-on, uh, and all this fun stuff. Uh, conventional means they, they like routines and they, you know, like working maybe with data in this case. And really to get a more clear sense of what these two things mean, we want to click on this ONET Interest Profiler here. So the ONET Interest Profiler, or My Next Move, they're kind of uh, synonymous names for this tool here is what I like to call a job personality test. And what this is helpful for is for those people, especially who aren't exactly sure what role they wanna go into next. And so they can take this little uh, tool here and what they'll do is they'll click through next here and they'll see this little key here. And what it's going to do is give you a sort of rating here as to you know either you're saying you strongly dislike something or like something. And now what are we strongly disliking and liking? Well. All these activities and these activities you see here these activities are uh, activities that you would just generally like or not like to do not necessarily saying would do you want to build kitchen cabinets as a job but would that be something that sounds interesting to you and just to give you an idea i'm going to answer these randomly because i do want to show you what this will look like you'll kind of notice that i can't move on without answering a prior question you can probably hear the click in my mouse there so let's try to answer these uh, correctly of course this isn't going to give me an accurate answer because i'm not actually reading each of these steps here, I'm just sort of buzzing through them. But you gotta get an idea of um, what sort of activities it's asking you. And you can even see, or begin to see, you know, what kind of things it might uh, corner you in. So I know for me, if I when I take this test, there's a lot of like, uh, do you wanna work with numbers or spreadsheets or anything like that? And typically I say somewhere in the middle or negative or not liking that. And tend to go for more of the stuff like paint sets or create special effects or anything like that more of the uh, artsy artistic stuff um that's just you know comes down to your personality again it does say the right at the beginning that there are no right or wrong questions it really just comes down to your personality let me just go through this entirety got one more page of this it does ask you a lot of questions 60 questions in total um so you do want to answer all these because it's going to give you a good idea of what your personality is going to be or more so what your job personality as i like to call is going to be okay so we can just click next here and now you can see these codes come up again they come up with different scores so it looks like my codes will realistic investigative and artistic and that's actually kind of funny because my real code is artistic social and realistic so even with guessing my answers and not even paying attention i got very close to my code and you can click on any of these interests before, below here to get an idea of what kind of jobs are in each interest. Um, but if you click next here, it's gonna give you those job zones 
that they were we were talking about earlier um, and the explanation of those things and then you keep clicking next and I'll show you what each zone means as I said you know a doctor would probably be five because it needs extensive job preparation whereas you know a truck driver was two or only needed to get that CDLA license and if we click over here we can see we click we can click on some of these areas here so for example let's click on job zone two here we'll see next appears um, and that's going to give us an idea of what job zone two is here again we click next to continue now we can see all those positions that job zone two would fall under uh, given our results based on this area here so maybe there was something there you want to look into to get into right away or closer right away uh, you can get an idea here you can see it also gives you a little score icon even here so a filled in uh, puzzle piece is the best fit while the one that's missing the fill in is a great fit still a good thing to see so you know maybe you might have some fun going through here saying you know i never thought about being a millwright or a sheet metal worker or anything like that and again you could kind of go through here easily now you know what i want to see what about a lot of preparation what do we need there you know it looks like an astronomer based on my guessing uh, interest profile is a good fit for me and you can hop in and out of these sections pretty easily um, so it is a nice and easy tool to use I think uh, it gives you some idea of what uh, these positions are and of course if you were to click on any of these things it would take you to another little screen here that gets more in detail about this stuff and if you wanted to get more information because it's kind of like a snapshot of that screen we were on before with the uh, heavy tractor trailer bit here what you can do is simply just take this title, copy it and paste it by highlighting it like I just did, clicking on the right click, copying, maybe open another ONET tab for example, so I'll do that right now, punch that into there, and we can see that position comes up right away. Now you can get a more specific idea of what that position does. But that's why I like to show you this little tool here because I think it is a quite useful tool on how uh, this works here. When we are back on site, we do actually have a workshop that hopefully we will be eventually able to do again, um, called the Career Exploration Lab that goes into this next move tool uh, rather specifically, a little more specifically than I'm doing right now. Uh, it's a great little uh, workshop to go into. So definitely look out for that, uh, should you be still looking for employment when we're all back in the office. And there's some other things back on this uh, sort of homepage here we were on before, work style, sort of, uh, you know, more personality test things. You need to be attention to detail, you need to have integrity, you need to be dependable, uh, work values, again, more of that stuff, other related occupations. And lastly, uh, there is a wages and employment trends section on here. And this is another section I like to go over in particular. It gives a lot of great information on the median wages or the, you know, average wages. Uh, one thing I like to remind people is this number here is a national number. So we wanted to make that more specific by going to local salary information here. We can do that. Click on that. We click on this little drop down arrow. And if you didn't want to spend time scrolling down to find Pennsylvania, simply press the P key on your keyboard. It will find Pennsylvania automatically. And you can just click go. All right. So we can see ONET gives us a little a breakdown of salary from the state to the United States, Pennsylvania here in the red, United States here in the blue, from a low to high range about the salary. So it looks like Pennsylvania is generally beating out the national wage, which is really good to see. This is a salary, but we can also view this as an hourly wage. Uh, keep in mind, there are going to be a scant few positions that might not have an hourly wage or a salary wage, but most of them, if not 99% of them do. So you can always trust in that if you're trying to view what salary would be. Even then, Pennsylvania is going to be a fairly large state, so we can click this View Table button up here. And we can find the same information, but now it's going to get much more specific. So we have Bloomsburg, uh, New York, State College, Reading, in our area of Allentown, Bethlehem, and Easton. And again, we see the same information, low to high hourly salary for our area in particular. So. ONET, like I said, is a great tool for interview research in addition to career exploration. And salary research is one of those parts that goes into that interview research bit. So you definitely want to do some salary research by coming here to ONET and figuring all that stuff out. And lastly, uh, they'll link you down here below to uh, jobs on the web. It links you to a website. Um, if you put your information here called Career One Stop, which is a website some of you may have used before. 
um, and some other sources of additional information if you wanted to look into related associations or handbooks or anything of here that might be related to what you just searched to. And that in a nutshell is ONET. Um, ONET has a lot more tools to it that I didn't really go over here today. So like I said, I do recommend coming around here, playing with all these little drop down arrows here. Um, but that's the main thing we like to show people at Link because that's really what most people are looking for when they come to ONET. But I hope this little tutorial helped you out in some way, shape or form. I hope you're staying safe and staying healthy and I hope you're keeping on, keeping on. Thanks for listening.